Hi, Jim Wagner here, your self-defense instructor. And I'm here in my school in Zollingen, Germany, and I'd like to talk a little bit about a procedure we do in urban survival. One of the unfortunate things of a man-made disaster, such as a terrorist attack or warfare, or even in a natural disaster, is dealing with dead bodies. Now, you may have to clear out an area where there was a bombing, or perhaps there was a major tsunami or earthquake, collecting bodies and putting them into an area so they don't contaminate uh, the air or the water is something you have to do. And here to demonstrate how you would put a body into a body bag is an expert on the subject and one of my reality-based personal protection instructors, Zamir Dubali. Hi, my name is Zamir Dubali. I'm working for a coroner's department. And today I brought a body bag to show you some techniques how to lift and evacuate dead bodies from a scene of crime or an accident. So this is inside the, the body bag. It, it's of course the body bag. They come in different sizes and colors, of course. And there are simple layers and double layers. And of course for big people there are XXL body bags. Inside the plastic bags are gloves. Always four because usually we come in pairs, but these are not very good, so we use uh, the normal uh, latex gloves. And then, of course, there are the zippers to close the bag because if you come to an accident, normally there's blood or something else leaking off the dead body, so you close the bag and don't uh, contaminate the floor or the car or maybe the ambulance. So this is why we use body bags. This is a clean way to dispose of a body. Behind me you see a simulation of a dead body found by the police or even by you. It's covered with an emergency blanket. Normally dead bodies on the street or elsewhere are covered with blankets or in this case emergency blanket because it's an accident and now Jim and I are going to show you how to put the dead body into the body bag. So you come to the scene of the accident and you lift up the blanket to see in what kind of shape the body is. Sometimes uh, they are pretty bad shape or messed up. Then you put on your gloves of course because you don't want to get anything on your hands and in some cases you even put on the mask because you don't want to get uh, sickness and you don't know in what kind uh, of state the victim is. First you put him like uh, in a normal position so you can lift him easily. So you get the victim in a position where you can easily handle it. Normally you lay it on the back so you can grab the feet and the wrist and make sure the back is open to the opposite side so you don't have to lift the victim over the closing side so the zipper don't get messed up and it's sometimes very bloody so you make sure nothing stays on the back outside because then you don't need a bag. When you put the victim into the body bag, you just make sure you got all parts and clear the, the scene of anything that's left over, maybe gloves from the emergency or the firefighters or even your, your own gloves. Then you close the bag with the zipper you see here. It closes all the way down or all the way up, depends how you see it. Then you notice you got these handles and you can carry the bag in the car or you put it in, you see mostly in movies or TV, in the tin coffins. And the tin coffins are extra sealed so you can move very uh, dis uh, dismantled what's the, what's the, word? The, the bodies away without leaking any substance on the street or in the car and it can be easily transported because uh, that's what, what they made for. Okay, now we have them in the body bag. However, if there's other body parts, like I have this leg, uh, a foot, now of course this is just a Hollywood prop, it's just a plastic foot, uh, 
and with it looks real but it's not but for training this is very effective and especially if you're teaching natural disasters or man-made disasters you want some of these props for the people who are clearing out the bodies so it makes it more realistic and they get over the shock factor now we've already put his uh, most of his parts in there and if you have a leg or something you stick it in there I have a finger here you stick that in also and zip it all up and that way for transportation or later on when uh, the coroner's department picks these people up uh, you'll be ready and of course in a natural disaster where thousands are dead I mean they could be here for a while so remember when you lift a body bag or anything don't lift it with your back lift it with your legs you got handles so it's very easy to lift and uh, with the right technique you can carry it uh, 10 15 meters without any problem so we showed you the practical way to lift up a dead body and put it in a body bag but there's a more dignified way if you carry one of your own family or friend and you know there's no disease or sickness or even the media or some something or someone else is watching and it looks much better if you lift the corpse or the dead body if you put your hands under the shoulders and lift it with the back first and of course the the feet is always feet so put a, together the ankles and grab the ankles with both hands and lift it up it looks much better than to hold on the wrist and uh, throw it or put it in the bag when you put him gently down when you grab him by the shoulders Behind me are my students in urban survival. And what they're learning now is how to go into a building after a natural disaster or man-made disaster. Well, this particular scenario is right after a terrorist bombing. We have a collapsed building. We have a man who's injured. And of course, we've laid in uh, some people who are dead. That's where the body bags are gonna come after we evacuate the injured. The unpleasant job of putting people in the body bag and bringing them out is uh, why we are teaching this to you now. Another scenario that we do in urban survival is if a building collapses, you may have to dig for survivors in a search and rescue attempt, or what we also call search and recovery, if it's been over three days and now you're just searching for bodies. Um, if you come across any parts of a body, whether it's a finger or flesh or entire limbs or an entire body, you want body bags handy and put them inside. Now even if you're not sure all the bodies match, you could always sort that out later or let the coroner worry about that. But uh, collect anything that you find and put it in the bag because not only is it important to identify this person through DNA analysis, but eventually the family is going to want something to bury in order to uh, have final closure in this tragic death. So maybe this will help you if you ever get in a situation where you have to lift a dead body or you will be in an accident where you can do more than just first aid. And thanks to Zamir from the coroner's department in Germany, be a hard target.